Got this? But his woman didn't take it so easily. What is it going to say? But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. The brother said, let's go, man. Let's go. He's all hating. Come on, man. Ain't nobody else hanging around here. It's gone on. Ain't nothing we can do about this. It's over. You know how the brothers are. See, brothers here, you know, hey, man, it's eight. Hey, hey. Do they here, so let's go, you know. But Mary stood there having a fit, crying. And go ahead. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. Now, now she decides to finally take a look in. When she first got there, the stone was gone, she took off running. Now she decides to look in, right? Okay. And see two angels in white sitting. I love how they always have angels dressed in white. <laughs> sitting. One at the head, go ahead. One at the head and the other at the feet. Yes. Where the body of Jesus had laid. Yes. And they say unto her, Woman, why be this time? Why are you crying? She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. Because they somebody stole his body. And I know not where they have laid him. Okay. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Go ahead. And knew not that it was Jesus. Now this is her man. She didn't know who it was. <laughs> this is her man, right? Okay. She turned around and saw this dude standing there, okay, and she didn't know it was her husband. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. Woman, why do you stop? Whom seekest thou? Now, why are you going to ask these dumb questions? Okay, I mean, who else would I be looking for, okay? And, and you know, who, who, wasn't you laying in here? Go ahead. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, how do, you, how do you confuse your man with the gardener, the caretaker of the, of the, of the, 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 the cemetery? Go ahead. Y'all relax there. Y'all relax. Go ahead. Uh, she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Yes. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi. Rabboni. Rabboni, thank yes. you. Which is to say, Master. Now this is deep. He just asked her a question. Woman, why are you crying? <laughs> Who are you looking for? And she thought he was the gardener. Now he says to her, Mary. <laughs> and now she knows who it is. <laughs> Maybe nobody can say Mary like she did. You might have had a Barry White kind of voice. <laughs> Now check how deep this gets. Now go ahead. Jesus said unto her, touch me not. Okay, now check this out. Check, this is deep. This is important. This is important evidence in this case. Can we take this to court? Yes. She recognizes this is my man. And she gets ready to put her arms around her man. And he said, don't touch me. Can't touch me. Why can't she touch him? For I have not yet ascended to my father. Don't touch me because I haven't ascended to the father yet. In other words, like if you touch me, there's so much glory over me. There's so much power over me. There's so much divinity in me right now that if you touch me, you won't be able to handle it. You will die. So don't touch me because I have to ascend. Y'all see this? Yes. Don't touch me, God, and sins and father, but do what? But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Go tell the brothers, 
that you've seen me and I'm getting ready to ascend to the Father in heaven. This is the concepts that we have in our mind. Y'all got those facts there? All right, now let's compare. Turn to Matthew. Twenty-eight, verse one. You remember the, the facts of the first presentation, right? Okay. I asked y'all, how many contradictions do you need before you know something is not right? Everybody held up one finger. All right, let's read Matthew twenty-eight, verse one. In the end of the Sabbath. In the end of the Sabbath. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. As it began to dawn. Now what did the first account say? While it was still dark. Right? Okay. The sun is coming up now. Go ahead. Came Mary Magdalene. Came Mary Magdalene. And the other Mary. Wait a minute, now wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. I just asked you in the first account, Mary Magdalene and who else? And there was nobody else. So now, Jesus' other woman <laughs> is coming along with Mary Magdalene. This is Mary, you know, the Mary and the Martha. Mary and Martha, y'all remember them? Okay. Well, see, Jesus supposedly married them too. Yeah, oh yeah, y'all didn't know that? Yeah, in fact, they put out a movie about it some years ago. It was called The Last Temptation of Christ. Didn't y'all see, how many of y'all saw that movie? Yeah. And in that movie, they supposed to tell you that, you know, he didn't really die on the cross. He came down off the cross and married, married Mary and Martha and had children by them. So he had three wives. Now you see why they banned the movie. Couldn't take it. Just the mere, mere idea, not only of him having a prostitute as a wife, but him having more than one wife? Oh, come on. That guy. Mm -mm. Couldn't handle that, man. They boycotted that movie all over the world. Read. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Oh, now we got an earthquake, okay. <laughs> Now mind you, in the first account, okay, there was nobody seen at first. She came and saw the stone had rolled away and took off running. Got the brothers, they came back and looked in the tomb and they saw two angels dressed in white inside the tomb. Now here, these two women, two women, okay, which are really are, are Isis and Nephthys in ancient comedic thought. That's where this whole thing stolen from in the first place. Y'all get me? Here we got an earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Go ahead. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, this is some deep stuff because now these two women here and they actually see the angel of the Lord coming down because the stone has still got the tomb sealed and the angel comes down and he rolls back the stone and sits on top of the stone. Go ahead. His countenance was like lightning. His countenance, yes. And his rampant white stone. Yes. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead. In other words, the caretakers in the cemetery, these are men now, saw this, this being of light sitting on top of this stone. Y'all bear with me as I talk this stupidity for a moment, will you? Because it's so stupid, I'm getting frustrated talking about it. But I want y'all to see how confused we are and the mess that we've been believing and got us messed up here. So you can go share it. Go, go tell your family, you know what? This brother said some stuff to me that I've never thought about before. Let me share y'all with y'all right from the Bible what he shared with me so y'all can stop believing this dumb stuff. This being sitting on top of the stone, the caretakers who were brothers, men, got scared. And not only did they get scared, they got so scared that they passed out. Fainted. 
That's what it means to became as dead men. They fainted. Go ahead, fifth verse. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, the, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Oh, this is deep now. This angel did not ask, who are you seeking? I know why y'all are here. Don't be afraid. Y'all looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Now this is some deep stuff. He is not here. For he is risen. As he said. Everybody ask yourself this question. Say with me. When did he get out of the tomb? When did he get out of the tomb? Because the stone was still there when the ladies got there. See, I don't drop the case already. <laughs> According to what we just read, the angel came down and rolled the stone away. Right? So where did he go? How did he get out of the tomb? It was still sealed. Now, you know what most church folks say? I can hear it right now. I hear them saying it. Well, ain't nothing too hard for God. Ain't nothing too hard for God. He, he was God. He could get out without rolling the stone away. Come on, people. Y'all see how we made the thing? Read quickly. Come see where the, see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Yes. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Now, wait a minute. I thought that we just read that Jesus talked to Mary in the, in the tomb. Now we're reading, he done left y'all, he already on his way into Galilee. So go tell the disciples that that's where he's gonna be, read. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. Now repeat after me, they left the tomb with fear, with fear and great joy, great joy. and told his, disciples told his disciples what they had seen. Remember that. Remember that. Ninth verse, go ahead. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Okay. For the sake of time, let's move forward. Go to Mark now. And let's see how this lie comes out. Mark 16. Verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Oh, so now they're telling us the reason why they came. Here's the problem. You see, that wasn't an uncommon thing to go and because it was a rush ceremony, so they're going to take spices and wrap, you know, anoint the spices to help get rid of the bad odor because they didn't have embalming fluid back then. Got what I'm saying? So they're going to anoint him with the spices and everything so his body's not stinking and da 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 da. But the problem is, why are you going to the tomb to anoint him when the tomb was sealed? You know, just like today when, you, when, they, when they lower the casket in the grave and then they put him in, in what they call a vault and then they, they put the, the big cement top on the vault right there in front of you, okay, and you know it's there. What, what, why are you going to go back and try to do something to the body? That doesn't make any sense. Read. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Okay, now the sun is uh, coming up. Go ahead. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the tomb? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Everybody say, Poor planning. Poor planning. <laughs> you coming to anoint this body, but the tomb is sealed. So on your way to the tomb, you're asking yourself the question, who gonna roll the stone away for us? Go ahead. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Yes, go ahead. It was very great. Yes. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothing, clothed in a long white garment. 
Okay. And they were frightened. Okay. And he said unto them, Be not frightened. You see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. Mm -hmm. He is risen. He is not here. Okay. Behold the place where they laid him. Okay. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. Mm -hmm. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Now check out this eighth verse. As I state my case, mm -hmm. what does it say? And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. They went out quickly and ran from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. For they trembled and were amazed. Now here is the, 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 the line that says you have to throw this thing out of court. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Did y'all miss that? Look at somebody next to you and said, according to the Bible, they did not tell anybody. Now look back at the same person and said, according to the Bible, they told the disciples. Is it a contradiction? Would this stand up in court? It won't even stand up in your own mind. Now what's really interesting here is verse 9 through 18 or 9 through 20 goes on to talk about what happened thereafter. But the problem is, verses 9 through 20 were added into the Bible after the book of John was added into the Bible. If you look at verses 9 through 20, if you guys got a red letter edition of the Bible, it's supposed to be the words of Jesus. Right? How did Jesus say all this if it was added into the Bible? I just presented some stuff to y'all that pretty much invalidates the validity of a so-called resurrection. Brothers and sisters, on this day, we need to understand that we need to exercise common sense. Everybody say common sense ain't so common no more. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If, if this had actually happened, according to the Gregorian calendar under the Roman Catholic Church, The year of Jesus' death would have been 30. What year did I just say? 30. 30. Now, let me, there's another in, in, inconsistency here. Because how old was he supposedly when he died? 30. Oh, y'all know this. He was supposedly 33 when he died. Right? But according to the Gregorian calendar, he died in the year 30. Which means he would have had to have been born when? Come on, do the math. He would have had to have been born 3 B.C. Right? Y'all know what B.C. stand for? <laughs> B.C. stands before Christ. B.C.E. stands before the common era. So how is he going to be born before he's born? You see what I mean when I say we don't think? But let's go with them for a moment. Here's what I want y'all to grab this. I know you never thought about this before. I want y'all to go out and share this with other people and mess up their ass there. <laughs> According to the Gregorian calendar, 
he, was, he would have died in 30 CE, which means, according to the Gregorian calendar, the resurrection before Esther Sunday, the Friday before Esther Sunday, which is the day he was supposed to have died on, right? Good Friday. Y'all right. with me? Yeah. That date was April the 7th in the year 30. Write that down. April 7th. 30 A.D. April 7th. Which means that his resurrection would have been on what day? April what? Well, April the 7th was a Friday. So the resurrection would have been April 9th. But yet he's supposed to be in the grave for three days. Thank you. Idiotic concepts. Don't make sense. He died on April 7th, was raised from the dead supposedly on April 9th. What's today's date? Today is April 8th. Why is it that every dog on year they, they straight with his birthday? They don't get that birthday wrong. Every year, December 25th is the birthday of Jesus. That don't change. Christmas Day is Christmas Day, December 25th. I don't care if it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't care. December 25th is December 25th. April 9th should also be the same way. Why is it that his doggone resurrection date keeps changing. <laughs> Christmas don't always come on a Sunday. December 25th can be any day. Why is it that April 9th, which would have been the day of his resurrection, is always falling? Well, April 9th ain't always on a Sunday. You see, today ain't April 9th. So how is it his doggone resurrection anniversary keeps falling on Sunday? Are y'all getting this? Yes, yes. Are y'all thinking? Yes. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? See, this really has nothing at all to do with somebody getting up out the grave. That's right. That's right. Ain't got nothing to do with that. And it's important to understand these facts, these things I'm presenting to you, because the message today is, if Christ be not risen, then the whole thing is a lie. Yes. I'm, I can't describe to you how infuriated I am with what has happened to the minds of African people because of what the Roman Catholic Church forced on us. I may have shared this with you. I was driving to Atlanta from here, going down Interstate 24 in Tennessee. And it was right after I entered into the state of Tennessee, maybe 20, 25 miles into the cross the state line, white folk talked to me. I know they're white folk, because of what it said. White ancestors spoke to me while I was driving, clear as a bell in my head, and said, why are you angry with us? And it, it was such a strong question that I had to start communicating back with this thing in my mind. I'm thinking, well, why are you angry with us? I'm saying, why am I angry with y'all? And he spoke to me and said, why are you angry with us for lying? That's just how it came to me, man. Why are you angry with us for lying? Then they said, that's what we do. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it came to me, man. You angry with us for lying. That's what we do. And then they spoke to me and said, who you ought to be angry with is your own people. 
because they keep believing the lies that we made up. So that's why I talk the way I do. I've decided, y'all, I'm not going to get angry with a fish for swimming. I've decided I'm not going to get angry with a dog for barking. I've decided I'm not going to get angry with a snake for crawling. I'm not going to get angry with a mosquito for biting. You know why? Because that's what they do. That's what they do. But there's no excuse for brothers and sisters who are the sons and daughters of Mother Africa. There's no excuse for you to continue to hold on to the lies and the stupidity and the religious teachings and doctrines that were forced upon your ancestors. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for you to say, I'm going all the way with Jesus. <laughs> Even if it costs my life. There's no excuse for that, man. See, y'all y'all weren't where I was a couple of weeks ago in the dungeons of the Cape Coast and Amina Castles where the Christians, Christians, force this madness on our people in the name of Christ and took them right outside those doors and put them on the very first slave ship which was called Jesus. Y'all don't know this. All you know is you a sinner saved by grace. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? That's a daggone shame. That black folk have to ask a question wondering if it had not been for a fabricated figure of the Roman Catholic Church on your side, where would you be? Look at somebody and say, we really messed up. And it's time for us to get it right. I close with, with these points to you. Well, there's one point really. Brother Ray, why do we need to get it right? That's an awesome question. I want all the children in this room to stand up. Y'all have all the children in the room stand up. And all of the adults in this room, here's what I want you to say. Point to one of these young people and say, we got to get it right for their sake. We got to get it right for them. For them. We got to get it right. You know why? Because if we don't get it right, they are going to go through the same mess that we're going through now. Young people, you can be seated. Thank you. We got to get it right for them. We cannot allow this mess to get into their heads like it was in our heads growing up. Y'all hear what I'm saying? No, Jesus did not get up out the grave, period. So since he didn't get up out the grave, yes, the whole thing y'all been practicing is a lie. Yes, I'm sorry to be the one to hurt your feelings like this. Your mama should have told you better. But she didn't know any better. 
My mama didn't know any better. But now that I know better, my job is to tear down the lie that has been given to us, that's been designed to hold us back. Are y'all grabbing what I'm saying? I know it's not going to make me popular. I don't care about that. I care about you being free, black people. Man, shoot. Get rid of this sickness. Because as long as you have this sickness in your head, now I'm talking really to those who are watching, many of you here, unless you are a visitor today and don't know any better, as long as you carry this sickness in your head, you will not do one thing to bring change in our society. And the reason why you won't do anything is because you're waiting on the Lord to do it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You've already decided that this world ain't your home anyway. You just a stranger passing through. Your home is in glory. That's where you're going. Well, it's really deep, y'all, because there was a time that I heard a woman, the first person I think I remember really hearing say that, her name was Alice Walker. And when she first said that, she was a fairly young woman. She was my great-grandmother. And she was in her 60s, I think, when I first heard her say that. Well, it's deep because Mother Alice Walker was waiting on the Lord to come back. She was excited and got happy over the fact that he's on his way back. That was her favorite line. You know he's on his way back. He's on his way back. I was a little boy at that time. I am now 58 years old, and he hasn't gotten here yet. Mother Alice Walker is dead and gone. Her children are dead and gone. You follow what I'm saying? Her grandchildren, some of them are dead and gone. Her great-grandson said, hell, I ain't going through that. I'm going to tell y'all something differently. I'm going to tell you he ain't coming back. So once you, once you understand he ain't coming back, maybe you'll get up off your behind and realize that the only way change and improvement is going to come in your life, in your community, in your neighborhood, is if you get up and do something about it. Am I making sense here? Get up off your knees. Stop calling for somebody out there in space to come rescue you. Come to do a damn thing for you. If you don't get up and help your children, your children are going to jail. If you don't get up and help your children, they're going to die in the streets of this city. Stop asking God to help you. Look at somebody and say, You are God. You do the job. Rescue yourself.